Hi, in this video, we're going to give an example of a greedy algorithm to select a set of activities. Typically, the Remy programming requires solving all subproblems, and that leads to algorithms which are somewhat efficient, but still sometimes not as efficient as we would like them to be. Uh, so, for example, typical runtimes are n square or n cube, where of course we would be much happier with uh, uh, running time closer to linear. Sometimes uh, one can do a greedy approach, uh, develop a greedy algorithm that leads to a better running time. Uh, at a high level, a greedy algorithm is one that always makes the choice that looks best at the moment according to some measure of best. That is, uh, it keeps making locally optimal decisions in the hope that they will lead to a globally optimal solution. And in this video, we're going to give an example of such an algorithm. Specifically, let us consider the activity selection problem. The input here is a set of n activities that need the same resource. So, for example, uh, um, you want to take classes and there is a set of n classes uh, and that you want to take. Uh, these activities are done as a, a subscript 1, a subscript 2, and so on. And each activity, AI, has a, a start time S sub i and a finish time F sub i. Okay? And the activities uh, uh, naturally are comparable if the uh, start time of one is after the finish time of the other. So what you want to do um, is to compute a, a, a maximum size subset of activities which are mutually comparable. Okay? So uh, in going back to the example from before, you want to take as many classes as possible, of course, uh, avoiding conflicts. So here is an example. Uh, here is a set of uh, uh, 11 activities. And each activity has a start time and a finish time. So for example, activity 6 has a start time of 5 and a finish time of 9. Um, the activities are plotted here. So the six activity starts at five and ends at nine. And again, you want to take a maximum size set of comparable activities. Um, one set of comparable activities is, for example, to, to do activity three first, uh, then nine and then 11. Okay. Um, that's not optimal because uh, instead of three, you can do two, four. Um, so, for example, a maximal set of comparable activities uh, would be uh, do activity 1, uh, then activity 4, then 8, and then 11. And this is not the only uh, maximal set. Uh, a one that, uh, the one that I mentioned before is also maximal. And that would be uh, A2, A4, A9, and A11. Now, at the beginning, uh, solving this problem seems quite complicated. Um, so one needs some idea. And the critical observation is what's written in this claim here. We can observe that uh, um, without loss of generality, in an optimal solution, uh, one with a maximum set of uh, comparable activities, um, you, can, uh, you, can have, uh, um, you can contain the activity which has the earliest finish time, okay? The earliest finish time. Okay, so again, we are claiming that uh, uh, there's always an optimal solution uh, which has the activity with the earliest finish time. And here is the argument of what this thing is uh, correct. Um, consider the activity which has the earliest finish time. Uh, let this activity have start time S star and finish time F star. Okay. And we want to show that without loss of generality, we can always include this in an optimal solution without making the solution suboptimal. Okay, well, if you give me any optimal solution S, okay, some set of activities, 
Uh, then S can be written as S prime plus or union. This is the union symbol. SF, where SF is some activity which has the early finish time among the activities in S. Okay, so here I've just written S um, emphasizing what is the activity which has the earliest finish time among those in S. Okay, and then you can uh, remove this SF and replace it with S star F star. Okay, and the new set S prime union S star F star will also be an optimal solution. Okay, the number of activities is unchanged. I removed one and I put another one. And the only thing that's left to observe is that uh, um, this is still compatible. And it is because uh, um, every activity in S prime has a start time, which is uh, after uh, um, F. Okay, because uh, F was the earliest finish time. So anything else has to start after F. And um, F is larger than F star because F star is the earliest, early, is the earliest finish time among all activities, not just those in S. Okay, and once that we have this, this idea, we can develop uh, the following greedy algorithm. We are going to uh, iteratively pick the activity which has the earliest finish time. And of course, that does not overlap with the activities that you already picked. Okay. And this thing is corrected by the previous observation. Okay, we can always pick the one with the earliest finish time. Then, of course, we must remove all those which are in conflict, and then we can iterate. Um, so this algorithm can be rendered as follows. Here is an implementation uh, of the activity selection algorithm. So it is convenient to first uh, sort the activities increasingly according to finish time. Okay, let n then let n be the, the number of activities. Uh, S is our set uh, of uh, uh, compatible activities that we want to output, and uh, as we observed earlier, we're going to start uh, with putting the um, uh, first activity because that's the one that's going to have the earliest finish time. Okay. And I'm going to set uh, um, i to be the index of the last activity that we added. So in this case, i is equal to 1. <clears throat> and then uh, we're going to have this uh, for loop and we just add activities uh, when we can. So we're going to start uh, uh, with the second uh, activity. We're going to check if the start time is after the finish time of the last activity that we added which has index i, and if so, we add it to s, and we, we uh, update the pointer i to the last activity to be equal to m. And once we are, we are done with this, we can output uh, set s. So uh, let's give an example of how this algorithm works. Uh, here is again the algorithm that I just uh, discussed, and here is an example. The first thing that we do uh, is to sort the activities. And in fact, these things are already sorted uh, by finish time, conveniently. OK, we have 11 activities. Uh, we start with the output set to be just activity A1. OK. And then uh, we have this index i at 1, then we have m is equal to 2. So the first thing that we do, we check what's the start time of the second activity, and we check if it's, uh, if it's after the finish time of the first. Okay, The answer is uh, uh, no, because the finish time of the first is 4, and 2 starts at 3. So we proceed with m. Okay. We looked at, uh, at activity 3. Um, and again, we cannot include this one because the start time is too early. So we proceed with m, m equal to 4. 
Again, we're going to check if the start time of the fourth is after the finish time of the first. Now the answer is yes. So we're going to include the fourth activity in our output set. And we're going to update the pointer i to make it equal to m. Okay. And now we, co we continue. Uh, we look at m equals to 5. We're going to check if the start time of 5 is larger than the finish time of 4. Uh, that's not the case. So I'm, so I'm going to um, update m. Again, we're going to check if the start time of 6 is larger than the finish time of 4. That's not the case. So I'm going to continue. I'm going to look at, uh, at activity uh, 7. Uh, again, I, I cannot include this. I looked at activity 8. Uh, and now this is something that I can include. So I update my output set with A8. I update my pointer I and I continue. I look at 9, it's not good. I look at 10, it's not good. Uh, then I look at 11, it's good. So I include this in my output. Um, I reach the end of the loop and I'm done. So it is a, a basic problem which uh, at the beginning looks quite complicated actually, but in fact uh, it has a surprisingly simple algorithm.